Hurry up and come on. Wait, wait for me, Luke. Huh? Oh, it's you two. Oh, great. It's a, oh, great. It's Estelle. <laughs> Hi there, Joshua. Okay, you little twerp. What's with a... Oh, great. It's a stealth remark. And what's the big hurry? How about telling us where you're headed? You're not thinking about wandering out of town alone, are you? The roads are full of monsters, I hope you know. You're such a pest, Estelle. Don't you know there's no room for girls to be sticking their big fat noses in boys' business? <laughs> <sighs> I hope she just smacks you really hard. I really do. <laughs> God. Quit acting like a racer, you wannabe. Tisk, tisk. How wrong you are, Luke. How incredibly wrong. You're more wrong than a fool who thinks there's a better taste in milk and liberal than the milk that comes from the Purzel farm. Huh? What? N no way. You're full of it, Estelle. <laughs> You're full of it, Estelle. In fact, as of just a few minutes ago, we qualified to become real bracers. Are you hearing that? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Real bracers! More like bracers in training, really. Don't think you should be getting on your high horse just yet, Estelle. Now, a high pony, on the other hand. Oh, shut up, Joshua. Quit being a killjoy. <laughs> exactly. Wow, you two are great. I'm so happy for the both of you. Pat, you are amazing. Luke, on the other hand, don't mind if he gets eaten by monsters. Oh, Pat, you're such a good little boy. I like that smart aleck and cynical brat you call a friend. Th th this isn't fair. I was supposed to become a bracer first. How? You're like two. <laughs> I can accept that Joshua became a bracer before me, but getting passed up by the likes of Estelle? Huh? Wow, I really hope a monster eats you. I'm, I'm just saying. What's the likes of Estelle supposed to mean? <laughs> just so you know, you can't even be a bracer until you're 16 years old. Get it? Only mature people allowed. Uh, that would definitely preclude you then. <laughs> <laughs> and that means no little kids who are still going to Sunday school. To be fair, you should probably still be in Sunday school. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, now I feel like I'm dogpiling on Estelle with everybody else in this town. Damn it. <laughs> I don't know how I should put this, Estelle, but Sunday school is dying to have you back. <laughs> <laughs> You'd better watch out, Estelle. I'm going to train at my secret base, and before you know it, I'm going to be a bracer too. I really hope you just get eaten by a monster. Come on, Pat, let's go! Uh, 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 Alright, I'm coming! See you later, Estelle! Bye, Joshua! Please don't let anything happen to Pat. I don't care about Luke. That boy, Luke, he's always trying to pick a fight with me. I wonder if he just plain hates me or something. Rather, I think it's the exact opposite. What do you mean by that? Don't worry about it. It's just a boy thing. At any rate, what do you think Luke meant when he said secret base? I don't know why, but somehow it makes me a bit curious. I know exactly what you mean. A secret base sounds really intriguing. <laughs> the pure heart of a young child can be so inspiring at times. Uh, that's not really what I meant by curious. Okay, we have to go get the liberal news. Hello there, Estelle and Joshua. What are you doing? What are you in the market for today? A new pair of shoes? Now that you mention it, are there any new ones in stock? You know, like the newest Stregas? Unbelievable. You've all, you've actually already forgotten why we came in here to begin with. We're not here to shop. Yes, we are. <laughs> we're supposed to be buying a copy of the Liberal News for Dad, right? So we're here to shop. 
<laughs> We're here to purchase something. <laughs> of course. <laughs> You've always been a big collector of the shoes, haven't you, Estelle? I'm afraid that the new Stragas aren't out yet. I do, however, have some copies of the liberal news in it, if that's what you're after. All right, I'll take one copy then. That comes to 100 Mira, please. Purchased Liberal News Issue 1. I know my dad always buys a copy of this magazine, but does it really sell that well? It sure does. The Liberal News has an excellent reporter and camerawoman who've done a great job reporting the latest and most reliable news. They're even supposed to have a running story related to Queen Alicia's birthday celebration. But enough about that. Why don't you tell me how you did today? Did you make it as the bracers? Today was your last day of training, wasn't it? Yep, everything went smoothly too. But how do you know about all that, Mr. Renan? Because you live in a tiny town? They're probably all gossips? <laughs> in a certain sense, both of you both you and Joshua are like well, are like celebrities here in Roland. I tend to hear a lot from customers coming through here. I shouldn't have expected anything less from Roland. The grapevine around here is seriously something to be reckoned with. No kidding, the women here especially love to gossip. Really? So far my impression is that the guys really love to gossip. <laughs> One more thing before you go. This gift is my way of saying congratulations. It's a free sample item I received with my shipment of goods, but don't hold the, the free part against me. Received, received recipe book. What's this supposed to be for? There's a ton of blank pages. It's a recipe book, isn't it? You got it. When you get hurt fighting, if you just limit yourself to healing bombs all the time, it's going to cut pretty deep into your wallet. Bullets. This is where a recipe book comes into play. If you eat food to recover your strength, instead of, it's basically free. Except for you have to buy the ingredients. You still have to buy ingredients to cook anything, don't you? So how would it basically be free? I'm so confused. <laughs> I feel like Mr. Rinnan should probably go back to Sunday school. Assuming you have all the ingredients anyway. Yeah, that was the key part. You So it's not free at all. Okay. <laughs> so if you eat something new, write it down of what's in it. And you'll have a lot of recipes in no time. So you don't you don't just magically learn all the ingredients when you eat something. <laughs> So how about we try this out? Go ahead and eat this cookie. Go ahead and eat this cookie, Estelle. Received maple cookie. Well, I have made it my Well, I have made it a personal rule to never turn down sweets. Uh <laughs> I hope that rule only uh, is only really applicable to people you know because that might be concerning otherwise if you're okay with that. You can Sweets from strangers. Eat maple cookie. Learn maple cookie recipe. Basically, all you have to do is eat the food to learn the recipe. It's as simple as that. Huh? As you as you're traveling about, you should eat whatever food you come across that you haven't had an opportunity to try before. Well, that sounds pretty convenient. Um, it's not that I don't like cooking and all, it's just that I never seem to get any better. I'd sure love to be able to increase my repertoire and really shock my dad's taste buds for once in my life. That's the spirit. And in passing, if you're in need of any ingredients, I'd be, I'd be delighted to service your cooking needs. You really know how to solicit your customers, Mr. Renan. Thank you for the recipe book. We'll put it to good use. Eating the recommended dish at restaurants or using to-go meals adds the recipe to the recipe book. By selecting the recipe book, all learned recipes will be displayed. As long as the necessary ingredients are available, the food can be made. 
There are two types of food, sit down of meals, which must be eaten on the spot, and to go meals, which can be carried as items. Sit down of meals cannot be carried as items. Ingredients used for cooking can be bought at a store or acquired from monsters. So they're not free. They're not free in the slightest bit. Liberal news, all you want. Uh, future story, the Queen's 60th is nigh. A milestone anniversary. The half year countdown to Her Majesty Queen Alicia's 60th birthday celebration has begun. This has been a banner year for Her Royal Highness, sparking more anticipation than this event has ever seen before. But we must not forget, too, that this year is the 10th since the Hundred Days War, a period of intense turmoil for all of Liberal. As we celebrate, let us also reflect on the tragedies of the past, so that we may refine from, refrain from ever reliving them in the future. We have been afforded this luxury of hindsight, and we must use it to its fullest. Preparations underway in the, in the royal city. Main Street is filled with the bustle of men and women furiously preparing decor and merchandise for the upcoming festivities and developing new products specifically for sale during the celebration. The competition is truly cutthroat. I yearn for my customers' taste buds to sing with delight says Miss Sorbet, local ice cream purveyor who deals her wares in the city's e in the city's east block. Sadly, her new mini her new menu will remain a mystery to us until the day of the festival. As the population grows, more and more businesses pop up all around me. But all that means is more customers, especially at festival time. So I'm certainly not complaining. She exclaims with a smile. Miss Sorbet seems to have a few tricks up her sleeve. So to all her competitors, we say, watch out! Who shall stand, who, sa who shall stand and who shall fall? <laughs> that was way too hard for me to pronounce. Prior, prior to the festival, Her Majesty will be hosting our annual martial arts competition in the Royal Arena. This fiercely competitive tournament is always a big hit with some avid spectators even regarding it as the day's main event. Which team will come out on top? Society. Burglaries across the Bose region. According to our sources, the Bose region has, been, has seen a string of burglaries over the last several days, and the people have had enough. The Royal Army Border Patrol stationed at the Hocken Gate has been stepping up efforts to apprehend the group of criminals responsible for these acts. And anyone with information on their identities is urged to contact the Border Patrol immediately. Travel, finding the perfect getaway. The Kingfisher Inn along the beautiful Valer Valeria Lakeshore is more popular than ever following a visit from the men of the royal city. Won't you come and fish with us too? All right, let's go. Time to head home. Estelle, Joshua, am I glad I found you too? Oh, hi, Anna. Is something wrong? You seem to be in quite a hurry. We've got a bit of a problem. Is your father at home today? Yes, he is. He said something about having to sort out a bunch of documents. But what's going on? You know Luke and Pat, right? Sure we do. In fact, we saw them not that long ago. What's wrong? Are they in some sort of trouble? I don't know how to say this, but... I just heard from Uni that Luke and Pat ran off to the tower that lies on the northern outskirts of Roland. You mean the tower... You mean the tower of Asmolus? Asmolus? Isn't that place supposed to be a breeding ground for monsters? That's what they say. Unfortunately, at the moment, Sherzard is out on other bracer business, so I want to ask your father to bring the boys home safely. What are you talking about? There's no time for that. Joshua and I, Joshua and I will go after them and bring them back. I don't know if that's such a good idea. The two of you only just qualified to be junior bracers today. With all due respect, I believe that Estelle's judgment is correct in this situation. 
if the two of us hurry, we may even be able to catch up with the boys before they reach the tower. I understand. I will take responsibility for whatever happens. As an emergency request from the Bracer Guild, I ask that you lose no time in bringing about the safe return of these children. Roger that! Understood. The Ismalis Tower can be reached by taking the western path at the junction along the Malga Trail. You can get onto the Malga Trail through Roland's Northwest Gate. I'll be on standby at the Guild, so if you run into any trouble, you know where to find me. This is our first real job. Come on, Joshua, we, ha we don't have any time to lose. I'm right behind you. Okay, before we go save Pat and Luke at the tower, come over to this building over here, up these stairs, in here. Thanks to the airliners in recent days, even Roland has been able to get a good selection of books. And thanks to that, I find myself compelled to buy a new one each time I head to the store. But I get yelled at by my wife for getting so many, so maybe I should cut back a bit. I've only got the first chapter of this novel, so if you want, I'll give it to you. Received Carnelia Chapter 1. Ooh. What's this say? The Imperial Chronicle. I stood there upright in front of the revolving door, scuffing the heels of my boots against the ground. Pulling slightly on the collar of my trench coat, I dropped my chin and gazed at my partial reflection in the curved glass. Aside from a short cropped hair, I wore a modest looking double breasted leather raincoat and a pair of special order steel reinforced boots, both of which at first glance appear to be the most common of common apparel. Yet, they were in fact much more than the naked eye could detect. My ordinary average apparent, it was of just as much importance today as it had been on any other day in times past. Not far off, the sound of footfalls echoed rhythmically, like the steady beat of a pendulum swinging back and forth as the throngs of peep as the throngs of those coming and going moved quickly along the cobblestone avenue, enveloped and tinged silver by the morning mist. At times, the calling voice of a street peddler disrupted the steady flow. But as soon as the hawking cries faded away, it would have resumed its course. Each morning that I found myself setting foot in the Imperial City, I also found my surroundings to be unchanged and stained by the som same somber tone of grey. Snatching up a magazine from the underarm of a street vendor, I tossed a few mirror into the left hand poised expectantly behind his back. The Imperial Chronicle, the magazine I read so often that even the ink bleeds were familiar. Roughly flipping open its cover, I scanned the headlines along the top of its monochrome pages. Then suddenly, my breath caught in my throat. At the very bottom of the new local news page, I found those letters, that sequence of characters which I had not heard nor seen since the time of that life-changing incident. My eyes instantly gravitated, gravitated to the spot, and for a time remained fixated. I sell not. The very meaning of those words, be, of those letters, became lost to my senses as, as I stood motionless, my gaze fixed on the same line of text until it all seemed to coalesce into a single blot of ink. After a few seconds of blank comprehension, my vision settled and I wrenched my eyes to the beginning of the article. As I began to read, my memories verged on a single point in my past and then slowly started to run in reverse, heading for that fateful event three years prior when this name was first introduced to me. It was not it was, on, uh, it was on an afternoon all those years ago, on a day not unlike this one, where the capital was overshadowed by its typical gloomy aura. I was a little younger than now, a 22-year-old 20, boy who stood silently in front of the boutique doors as usual, double-checking double his appearance before lightly treading over to Mitch's imperial factory. It was on this day that it had been arranged for me to receive a new job from Mitch, the shop owner himself. 
Although he was a drab, middle-aged man, I, being the ornament enthusiast I was, had found myself as one of his few as one of his few regular customers. I headed down a dank alleyway, and after passing through a partially rotted wooden gate, I could see the soft glow of the flickering oval light just outside the entrance of the of the factory whose structure was halfway down halfway below street level. I first began receiving jobs from Mitch about the same time when dissension began to occur in society over the Hundred Days War. It was during this period that relations between the liberal kingdom and the empire were at their worst and the importation of ornaments had become almost non-existent. Conspiring with underground elements and planning a smuggling operation, Mitch made me out to be his accomplice in crime. For the job which I received by his hand was none other than that of the courier. Being nothing more than a commoner in my teens at the time, I met him in a juvenile devoid of any connections and life besides. I naturally jumped at the opportunity without a moment's he hesitation. Yet even after relationship, relations with Lil had returned to some degree of normalcy, I, received, I realized I was in no mood to give up my specialty, which focused mainly on the delivery of stolen goods. The reason being, there was no job out there which could bring in the kind of mirror this one did. With an unrefined and inconspicuous appearance, I had countless times before hidden items of various sorts in my hat and trousers, and made my way hither and thither between the borders of these neighboring nations. Though to my delight my wallet had become increasingly laden with a bounty of monetary rewards, I had routinely changed my, changed my alias as a, as a precautionary measure. So much, in fact, that these false names had built up into quite a list over the past few years. I had been known as Phil the Frivolous, Rooney the Trickster, and even Chris the Coward. However, Mitch had always called me by one name, Toby. This was the identity I had used for my initial job and the one I liked above all others. Interesting. I'm really curious to see where that is going to go. <laughs> okay, let's make our way to the tower so we can save Pat. Maybe we'll get lucky and Luke will get eaten by a monster. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, let's be very careful because I have a feeling this is going to be really bad if I get into any unnecessary fights before I get to the smallest tower. So I'm going to try and be very careful. Like I said, this is not my difficulty and not a new game plus save file. So yeah, let's grab this. Found a reviving bomb. Awesome. Okay. So which way is the smallest tower? Manga Trail. Okay. So it's to the left over here. I would normally go exploring for loot. I don't think that's going to be a good idea right now. Go past you. Grab this. Tear bomb. Awesome. Oh god. <laughs> that actually made me flinch. <laughs> oh, thank god it missed. Okay, aqua bleed. Hopefully these two attacks will kill it. Awesome. Thank you for missing! <laughs> I wish that knocked it out. Okay. We're still fine, I think. Awesome. We're good to go. Woo! That could have turned out to very poorly for me. Okay. Those don't seem to move. Good for me. Oh god. I was not paying attention. I was looking at my CP gauge. <laughs> Actually, it looks really cool. I want to explode this place. It looks like we've come all the way to his mullest tower. I didn't see any signs of them along the trail, so do you think they've wandered inside? It's quite likely that's the case. Let's go in. It looks like we'll need to hurry. Right!
Follow us to our first floor. It's dark in here. I'm scared. Quit being a baby. We're only on the first floor of this place. Did you hear that? They really did come in here. Inhale! Estelle, are you alright? Luke! Pat! If you can hear me, answer me now! <laughs> Those little brats, are they pretending they can't hear me? They might have climbed up to the second floor. Let's hurry and see if we can find them. Okay, hopefully there are no monsters. Uh, doesn't look like it. Awesome. <clears throat> what are we going to do? So, so many help! <laughs> Russian simultaneously with Joshua. Let's go, Joshua! Right, I've got your back. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh, we pull a lot of bad guys. Y y you monsters, go somewhere else. No, shoo, shoo, leave us alone. Chew on this. Ha, ha, Estelle, what are you doing here? Joshua, you're here too. Get back, you two. These monsters aren't playing around. We'll take care of them. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Hit. Protect all NPCs. If an NPC's HP reaches zero, the game is over. Uh oh. Ow. Okay. Protect you first. Hopefully, the NPCs won't decide to attack the enemies. Or go towards the enemies. <laughs> Not attack. <laughs> thank you for missing. Th oh, thank God you're all missing. That is so good for me. And luckily, the NPCs aren't running towards the enemy. <laughs> Otherwise, this would really suck. Oh crap, it has crit. Uh, okay, didn't do anything. Thank Oh my god. Whew. That crit could have been really bad for me. Okay, off the bleed. It'll probably die. So blur. Thank you for dying. Awesome. And I'm about to level. It looks like that's that. Yeah, I'm glad everyone's safe too. By the way, that was great timing, the way you blitz, blitzed those monsters, Estelle. You really think so? Is it safe now? Oh man, that was awesome! You really showed them, Estelle? Not bad for a girl. What do you mean, for a girl? You little twerp! <laughs> Ow, that hurts! What are you trying to do to me? What's wrong with you? You even dragged poor Pat all the way up here against his will. It's time to think about what you did today. Ow, you're hurting me. Stop it. I kind of wish she had just let the monsters beat you up a little bit. I said stop it, you violent she-devil. <laughs> so this is the thanks I get for saving, saving your neck, huh? It looks like it's time to give you some of my special discipline. Ow, 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 ow. All right, Estelle. I'm sorry. Everything was all my fault. Uh, um, Estelle? Shouldn't we forgive each other like they teach at school? This brat doesn't need forgiveness, but a little discipline should do the trick. Estelle, behind you! It's something with teeth, isn't it? <laughs> uh, nice monster? I'm not going to make it in time. Oh, damn. Huh? Dad, you came. You still lack skill and understanding, Estelle. Oh, shut up. You must always pre prepare for unseen danger by sharpening your senses. That's part of what it means to be a bracer. D Dad? 
what are you doing here? I just happened to be in town and heard the whole story from Ina. I'll give you the points for your quick thinking and taking action to come after the children. But you failed to fall. But you failed to fall. Nah. <laughs> but you fit. But you failed to follow through completely. Oh my God, that was way too hard. <laughs> I really messed up, didn't I? It's a good thing you showed up when you did. I'm sorry, I should have been watching her back. That just means that you have room for improvement. Constantly working to overcome your weak spots is the key. Understood. So, how about we head home, everyone? So, how about we head home, everyone? Can you boys walk? Uh, I, I think so. That was incredible, Mr. Bright. You were, a giz you were like a gazillion times more awesome than Estelle. He really wasn't, though. <laughs> I mean, she charged in, took out all those enemies with Joshua's help, and saved her life. Cash just came in and just hit the enemy from behind. <laughs> she fought them up front. He she's way more awesome. Ha ha ha, of course I was. I'm her father. No, you really weren't. All right, everyone, let's file on out of here. I'm with you. I'm with you, Mr. Bright. <laughs> I hate Pat. Or, I mean, I hate Luke. Pat's awesome. Who's the glory hog now? I mean, I guess I should be thankful that Dad saved my behind. But why does he have to go and talk to take all the credit like that? It really chaps my hide. <laughs> That's just the way he is. After all, he is Cassius Bright. Yeah, he's a dick. <laughs> That's the only thing I know for sure about Cassius right now. It seems like you've had quite a day. Dad is just unbelievable. The second we get back to Roland, he says, I'll leave the reporting to you and takes off for home. The sheer nerve, I tell you. There's no need to make a mountain out of a molehill over it. At least the boys came back safe and, safe and sound. Oh, excuse me. Anyway, I think that's all there is to report. Received payment for child rescue. Received payment, payment in Mira, 1000. Awesome. Gained BP, 3 plus 1. Sweet. Current rank is Junior Brazer, 9th class. You did well for your first assignment. From the details of your report alone, I believe I can commend you both for a job well done. You should be proud of yourselves. Y you really think so? I know so. In fact, you'll do even better on your next job. If anything else comes up, I would appreciate your help again. Sure. How about we head home too? How about we head home too? <laughs> I guess we'd better. I've still got dinner to prepare. Would you mind holding on a second? A letter arrived. A letter arrived for blah. a letter arrived for your father just a little while ago. Unfortunately, since he went straight home, I never got a chance to give it to him. Do you think you could deliver it instead? Received letter to Cassius. I wonder if it's more work-related stuff. I imagine so. The letter appears to be from one of our foreign branches. One of the guild's foreign branches? As I'm sure you already know by now, the Burl isn't the only country where the Bracer Guild exists. On top of that, your father is widely known all across the Zemurian continent, so we can expect these kinds of letters from time to time. If you two would be so kind as to make sure that he gets this letter, I would have really appreciated it. Appreciate it. <laughs> ah. A lot of talking is definitely taking its toll. Hey, Joshua? Hmm? Do you think I'm really cut out to be a bracer? Well, you seem to have inherited your father's skill with a staff. And your nosy personality doesn't let you ignore someone in distress. Really? You think so? 
Sure, but why are you asking? Are you still thinking about what happened back at the tower? At the tower? Yeah, because of my carelessness, Luke almost got caught in the middle of a dangerous situation. But he was in a dangerous situation. You saved him. <laughs> if Dad hadn't come when he did, he could have been seriously injured. Seriously injured. I guess I'm just worried about whether or not I'll be able to stay on top of things in the future. That kind of talk doesn't sound like the Estelle I know. Huh? If we fail today, then all that's left to do is take back our losses tomorrow, right? Huh? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. Overthinking and worrying about things that haven't happened yet is definitely not like you. Isn't being a bracer what you've always dreamed of? How can you expect to succeed if you let something like what happened today discourage you? Joshua... You're right. This isn't like me at all. I don't think... I don't think a serious expression really suits your face either. What? <laughs> You're laughing like a big... Like a big ditz is far more natural for you. Oh my fucking god. This guy really doesn't know how not to just be a... <laughs> I don't even have words. I don't have words for this. <laughs> hey, what's that supposed to mean? Exactly! You're going to see my angry expression if you keep that up. <laughs> okay, I admit that last comment was pushing things a bit. The last one? You mean almost every comment that you've said since waking up? <laughs> I'll overlook it this time, and thanks for cheering me up. I don't know about you, but I'm really... <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm so ready to get home and eat. My stomach just started growling like a bear. Maybe glutton is closer to the mark than dits. <sighs> I, I, I kind of wish Cassius had just left you to die. <laughs> Ah, that's really mean. <laughs> but God, he's such an ass. Oh my God. <laughs> I have no words for how much of an asshole Joshua comes off. <laughs> All right, so do we go in here? We're home, Dad. We finished reporting to the guild like you told us to. Good work, kids. The details of your reports will be, will be reviewed at, e at each branch and will affect your pay and rank and advancement in the future. Please make sure that you always remember to do it. Don't worry, we will. And before I forget, I got that copy of the liberal news you wanted. There was this letter for you at the guild, too. Handed over the liberal news and letter. A letter, huh? Well, I'm going to get cleaned up and start dinner. Oh, and Dad? Um, thanks for coming when he did today. He really helped me out back there. I see you're being, I see you're being rather gracious today. Papa is happy. How delightful that my daughter has finally understood what a great man her father is. Her father truly is. Ah, oh, I hate you, Cassius. I really do. There's no need to hold back. Estelle, come and jump into your father's loving arms. How about I just go find a monster and throw the monster at you? <laughs> in your dreams! Exactly. I swear, the men in this house have one thing in common. They never know when to shut up. <laughs> they really don't. <sighs> I guess she's not as depressed as I had thought she'd be. Should I be thinking you, Joshua? I didn't do much. I just gave her a push in the right direction. Estelle's a resilient girl to begin with. Yes, she is. But she still has a long way to go. She'll run into more than just a few stumbling blocks in this line of work. And overcoming those obstacles is what will teach her to stand on her own two feet. There's a there's that soft side of yours talking again. <laughs> oh no! RA 
snakes supposed to explode like that? No, no, they're not. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have gone in expecting to make a perfect, perfect meal on the, in a single try. <laughs> no, wait, tricking is supposed to be about passion. Exploding, exploding eggs are passionate, right? Now, once more. <laughs> <laughs> that daughter of mine can sometimes be a little too passionate. <laughs> I think I'll go help her with dinner. We don't want the curtains to catch fire again. <laughs> oh my fucking god. You're letting someone who set the curtains on fire cook dinner? Why? Why? Why would you leave her on her own in this situation? Why? Why? <laughs> but at this rate, there's no telling when we can expect to have a bite of food ready on the dinner table. Are you people this bad at teaching somebody how to cook? Come on! It cannot be that difficult. Ha <laughs> ha! Alright then, let's see what this letter is all about, shall we? Cassius cuts the letter seal. Hmm, a message from the Erebonian Empire. Oh. Uh-oh. What? <laughs> Doesn't sound like a good thing. Doesn't sound good. Wow, this is a surprise. Hold on, hold on. How did she catch curtains on fire? There does not seem to be a window by that stove or any of the kitchen stuff at all. How did you catch the curtains on fire? They're like 20 feet away. What? <laughs> <sighs> this new dish is what I call Estelle's explosion over rice. <laughs> Egg explosion over rice. Uh, I'm scared. Be sure to savor every last morsel. <laughs> I will. Your cooking this evening is excellent. My compliments to the chef. Wow, that was an actual compliment. Unlike everything else you said this entire game so far. <laughs> this is raw talent at its best. Estelle, take the compliment humbly. You were making eggs explode, apparently. Don't. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Today certainly has been a busy but great day, nonetheless. We, call, we qualified as junior bracers, had our first Google assignment, and I didn't even lose my eyebrows making dinner this time. Oh my fucking god, are you kidding me? <laughs> well, I would hope you didn't lose your eyebrows because you probably would have lost most of your hair as well, since that's covering your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not just snort. Chump. <laughs> not to mention the food being delicious. For a first attempt, this dish is actually quite edible. <laughs> At first, I thought I might have to pitch it out the window. <laughs> you are such a shitty father. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> At first, I thought I might have to pitch it out the window when you weren't looking, but it seems that technique won't be necessary tonight. Wait, you've done that before? What is wrong with you people? Why do you not actually help her? Oh my god, you are a horrible father. <laughs> Sometimes you're just as despicably rude, dad. No wait, sometimes you're just so despicably rude, Dad. Don't you don't you know how to be humble and just say something tastes nice? You 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 really shouldn't be talking talking about people being humble as Del. Did you forget what you said like two minutes ago? <laughs> Alright, then how about this? Boy, I never thought I'd be able to eat something so wonderful like this before I had to leave on business. You made a splendid meal, Estelle. Wow, you're fucking awful at this. Thanks, Dad! Wait, business? Are you really leaving again? Yes. 
something un unexpected came up. This time, I'm going to be away for a while. <laughs> Hold on a minute. You're leaving? When? Tomorrow morning. Wait, I don't care what kind of job you're doing. That's just too soon. It's about that letter, isn't it? Was there some sort of incident? Oh, it's nothing like that. Just a simple investigation. I'll have, to, I'll have to visit a number of places, so it'll take me about a solid month before I'm through. That being the case, please take good care of the house while I'm away. What do you mean, that being the case? You always use some vague excuse like that and take off for who knows how long. We have to accept it, Estelle. A bracer's job is to help those who come to us for help. I know, I know, but what are you going to do about all your jobs here at the Roland Branch? You've already accepted a few of them, haven't you? Only, oh, only about five or six. So I was thinking, and how about the both of you handled them for me instead? What? Are you really asking us to do the work that you're supposed to be doing? <laughs> that I am. I'll have you do the ones which I think you can accomplish. And I'll ask Sherzar to handle the difficult ones. So what do you say? Sure. Sure, of course we will. You're okay doing these too, right, Joshua? Yeah, no problem. Looks like a good way to get some experience as a bracer. Then it's settled. I'll stop by the guild and let Ina know about the change of plan before I leave. All right, I'm starting to feel more determined than ever. We'll have to bust our tails with these jobs so you don't so we don't tarnish your name while you're gone. Oh Estelle, my beloved daughter, Papa is so proud. Oh my dear Lena, who art in heaven, can you see your daughter now? Our Estelle has grown up to be such a lovely young woman. Face it, Dad, you're getting old. If you lose your if you if people lose their trust in you at this age, you might not you might as well just throw in the towel forever. I'm only helping you out because I'm your daughter, and I have and I have a duty to pay you back for the last 16 years. I'm only 45, and what's more, I'm very likely the most active member of the, in the entire guild. <laughs> okay, calm down, Cassius. Calm down. Not bad for a pair of comedians. By the way, Dad, which flight will you be on tomorrow? The one headed for Gronsel or the one headed for Bose? I'll be on the one headed for Gronsel. My flight departs at 10 o'clock in the morning. That means I'll have to get up a little early tomorrow. Earlier tomorrow. I'd better set my alarm clock just in case. Dad, are you still awake, Joshua? You'd better hold you'd better hold off on the liquor, or Estelle would get mad again. This is just my way of lifting my spirits before I travel. How about yourself? Would you like to join me for a drink? Uh, isn't he underage? I'll pass. Actually, what I should be saying here is, don't offer alcohol to minors. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not like Shara who would jump at any chance to enjoy a drink or ten. <laughs> That's because she holds her liquor much better than I do. There's something really serious happening, isn't there? There's no conclusive evidence, but there appears to be some sort of movement within the Empire. The Erebonian Empire? That sounds pretty suspicious. This movement doesn't appear to be overt. But that's what has me worried. I intend to do a little probing at the Arabonian Embassy to see what turns up. Understood. I'll make sure to look after Estelle while you're gone. Don't you spoil that girl, you hear me? 
What gives you the impression she was he would spoil her? He's been kind of a dick the entire game. Now that she's become a bracer, she needs she needs to learn how to look after herself. Oh my god, I can't read today apparently. Now that she's become a bracer, she needs to learn to look after herself. Still will be fine. She's got good instincts, and despite being a bit rough around the edges, she has talent with the staff as well. Oh my god, he's actually being nice towards Estelle. Or talking about Estelle. Not really towards her, since she's not here. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind that she'll be a first class bracer someday. Yet at present, she'll be she's like a babe in arms. But yet at present, she's like a babe in arms who knows nothing about the realities of the world around her. At some point in time, she'll have to choose which path to follow in life. And Joshua, the same thing can be said for you too. It's already been five years since you became a part of this family, hasn't it? How time does fly. Yes. It sure does seem that way. About what you said back then, are you sure you won't reconsider taking those words back? For me, keeping my word is what defines who I am. If I can't do something, something as simple as that, I don't know how I could live with myself. I know this may sound stubborn, but I can't take back what I said. I'm sorry. There's no need to apologize, but I'd like you to remember this. No matter what path you choose in life, you can't erase these past five years. Stella and I will always be your family. No matter what may befall, no matter what may befall you. God. Thanks, Dad. Prologue: A Father's Love, A New Beginning. Well, it looks like it's time for you for me to board my flight. Estelle, don't do anything I wouldn't do myself, and try not to be a handful for Joshua either. For the umpteenth time, I heard you already. How would you try not to go overboard yourself with your own work? You're not getting any <laughs> you're not getting any younger, you know. <laughs> Say what you will, but I'm not about to be overtaken by my, any youngsters. Charizard, I'm really sorry about placing all this work on your shoulders at the last minute. Please don't be. I am slightly concerned, however, about whether or not I can do a decent job in your place. There's no need to be humble, Silver Streak. And I don't mean to make your life any more difficult, but please keep an eye on these two. You just leave that to me. Is tightening up the reins and not spoiling these two fine with you? You definitely understand the way I think. <laughs> What's this all about? <laughs> it looks to me like a mutual understanding between a master and a pupil. The Gronsel-bound airliner Lind will be departing shortly. All passengers, please board the airship now. Uh-oh, I'd better take my seat. Have a great trip, Dad. We'll take care of everything here while you're gone. Hurry back. Don't forget to bring me a pack of souvenir. <laughs> I'm not sure everywhere you'll be going, but don't forget to bring me back a souvenir. A little fancy something would be nice. Hey now, this trip is for business, not pleasure. If I have any money left over, I'll certainly think about, about it, though. All right, you two. Be good while I'm gone. No. <laughs> We're gonna raise hell. <laughs> it's time for Estelle to burn the house down by making eggs and catching curtains on fire that are like 20 feet away from the stove. <laughs> Bye, Cassius. I'm not going to miss you. You've been nothing but kind of a creep and an ass all game. 
He's gone. Again. Yeah. Come on, you two. There's no need to look so down. Your father will be back in no time. I don't know what kind of an investigation he's been asked, asked to do this time, but when it comes to your father, he'll have it done before you know it. I, I, I'm not sad that he's gone. He's always been way more than... He's always been away more than he's been at home. So he's an absentee father. Cool. All right, all right. If you say so. Anyway, I'm going to get to work on those jobs your father left for me. But if you run into any trouble, give me a holler. I'll do. But first, I'd like to try and finish a few jobs with Joshua. I want to see what we're capable of doing as... I want to see what we're capable of doing as junior bracers. Alright, if you insist. I imagine that with Joshua hang tagging along, there won't be much to be there. <laughs> oh my god. I imagine that with Joshua tagging along, there's probably not much to be worried about. Good luck, you two. Thanks. We'll do our best. So, what do you want to do now, Estelle? Shall we stop at the guild? Can we go stop at the guild? Yeah, we should probably talk to Aina and find out what jobs are waiting for us. Let's go! Okay. <laughs>